One of them went crazy. But the man who had listened to the wise man continued to drink water only from his own supply and kept his sanity. And he was the only sane person left among the madmen. And therefore, he was called crazy. And then he poured his reserves of real water, the old water, onto the ground. And he drank the new water and lost his mind. And the madman decided that he had become sane. Very, a major part of our, our brain, of our brains are water. So the water and the easy movement of the water molecules and so on will leave part of that imprint. So yes, to some extent, the water is implicated in the patterning of the information in the brain. Now when you look at organs, say the heart or the lung or muscles or the brain, then all that you can see in a simple NMR experiment is the water in these organs. The water, your head is full of water. There is nothing else but water, almost. That's mean, uh, there is a human being here, there is a water. Uh, and uh, this uh, water, if uh, this water has uh, very many kind of information, hmm? so if that uh, water uh, is injected to his uh, human body, this information will be converted, converted to the, to this uh, human being and. Uh, that may change the character of a uh, human being. Let us see how this type of water affects human blood. The doctor is drawing blood from a patient's finger. Using a special microscope, we shall be able to see the condition of her body from this drop. These are red blood cells and they've lost their electrical charge, so they're all stuck together in a formation called a rouleau. Here's a huge symplast. Symplasts are associated with heart disease and uh, arthritis and lung disease and many other conditions that could be coming in the future. The doctor asks the patient to drink a small amount of structurized water. After 12 minutes, the doctor again draws blood from the patient and studies it. So you can see that the cells then become buoyant, they become slippery, and they have their electrical charge, so they repel each other. That allows them to carry oxygen, and it means that we're changing the pH of the blood back to an aerobic environment rather than an anaerobic environment. I think that's utterly amazing. That, that a water could, that just drinking water could do that. Traditional Eastern medicine has been based for many centuries on the vibrations and resonance of the body's water content. The pulse indicates if the resonance tone is right. It is believed that the pulse may be strong, weak, cold, or hot. On the basis of this, an experienced physician carries out a kind of energy scan of the body makes a diagnosis and prescribes treatment. We do not heal with water because a person, the human body, is water. The person simply reads the mantras in order to correct the bad water he has inside. How this hidden effect works is not known. In all the world's religions, Christianity, Islam and Judaism, it is the practice to recite a prayer before taking food or to consecrate the food during major religious holidays. How often do we stop and think, what for? And how did the certainty arise in such dissimilar religions that this is the right thing to do? Why did something that science is only now trying to understand seem obvious to our ancestors? It turns out that the frequency of vibrations in the prayers of any religion uttered in any language is 8 hertz, which corresponds to the frequency of the oscillations of the Earth's magnetic field. Therefore, a prayer pronounced with love creates a harmonic structure in the water that is an ingredient of absolutely all foods. 
We now have some idea about how this happens through the structurization of water clusters, water molecules. Therefore, we can take some purely practical advice from this. To sit down at the table in a very good mood and under no circumstance to dine with cruel or aggressive-minded people because this will have a direct destructive effect on our health. In 1995, Dr. Emoto Masaru was the first one to record musical impressions on water. In Dr. Emoto Masaru's laboratory, they allowed water to listen to music, after which they flash froze the water. And then, under the microscope, they could clearly see the crystals that the water had formed. Here is what the music of Bach looks like. Mozart. Beethoven. Heavy rock. Sometimes it's just certain eruptions, emotional ones, which cause such absolutely negative results. I can't recall a case in which such a negative spewing out of emotions as this happened at a classical music concert. Experiments show that aggression causes a sharp change in water's memory. Such water can provoke an aggressive state in hitherto calm people. Strange as it may seem, evil interacts more easily and simply. Apparently this has to do with the sensitivities of human beings, who always feel negative things more acutely. Dr. Emoto has conducted another interesting experiment. He placed rice into three glass beakers and covered it with water. And then every day for a month, he said, thank you to one beaker. You're an idiot to the second. And the third one, he completely ignored. After one month, the rice that had been thanked began to ferment, giving off a strong, pleasant aroma. The rice in the second beaker turned black. And the rice that was ignored began to rot. Dr. Emoto thinks that this experiment provides an important lesson especially with regard to how we treat children. We should take care of them, give them attention, and converse with them. Indifference does the greatest harm. tell some dreamy story, but almost practice. Practical experience shows that hatred, rage, and even annoyance not only exert a destructive influence on other people, but they also give feedback. The speaking Intellectually, at the level of thoughts, a person who sends negative thoughts is polluting his own water, of which his body is 75, 90% composed, and giving it a negative charge. Many laboratories around the world have repeatedly carried out an experiment that produces similar results. Water from a single container was divided into two portions. One part was subjected to an outside influence that changed the structure and properties of that water. The water in the second flask acquired the same structure and the same properties after a certain period of time. 
even if the two portions of water were a significant distance removed from each other. The water has a very important uh, photographic memory, we can say that, and also you can imprint it with very subtle energies, even from 10,000 kilometers. Does that mean that remote communication occurs between human beings who are essentially structures composed of water? In February 2005, Professor Vyacheslav Zvonikov and a group of his colleagues conducted an experiment to confirm or disconfirm the hypothesis that remote communication between people is possible. Two people are 15,000 kilometers apart. One is in Moscow. The other.